All right, so I'm gonna give you three. <laughs> it's so hard to talk and kick. I'm gonna give you three reasons why you can't hit a two-handed backhand dink, and none of them have to do with your skill. component that you need to improve is going to be your thoracic spine mobility. A way you can test your thoracic spine is just like so. Find a chair, put your feet together, squeeze your knees together. I'm going to cross my hands, make an X, and then I'm going to hold my face with, that, with the backs of my hands. From there, I'm going to stand up tall, I'm going to exhale, and I'm going to rotate to one side. As, that looks so weird, right? I'm going to rotate to one side as hard as possible. Exhale. You can record yourself doing this, or you can just kind of eyeball and be like, okay, I'm at about 45 degrees of motion there. I want to get plus 45, I want to get 45, 50. So let's test the other side. This is the most important side. This is the side, right? Like this is my backhand side. Let's test the other side, stand up tall, exhale as you rotate. I put the hands here so you're not just like cranking on your neck. It is all connected. I'm getting a little cramp back here, guys. But I'm better to my right side. I play baseball. I'm probably at 60 degrees plus on my right side and maybe 45 on my left. But this is my backhand side. Most people are super limited in thoracic rotation and they can't get, get around the ball. So like opening up the thoracic spine mobility will help you open up for your two-handed backhand dinks. Number two is gonna be hip mobility. Let's test, see what mine looks like, and then we're gonna talk about some normal values. So I'm gonna face away from the camera so you can get a good angle. I'm gonna put both of my legs in the air. I'm gonna bend them at 90 degrees. I'm gonna do my left one first. I'm just gonna do internal rotation. So that's taking my femur and rotating it inward. I'm gonna go as far as possible actively without like any assistance helping me actively as far as possible. Rotate it, hold, check out that angle, see how many degrees that is, roughly, and then I'll do the opposite. External, a little bit limited there. So it looks like I have more, a little bit more internal. That's about comparable on both sides. So that was probably what? Probably 35 to 40 degrees on both sides. Same thing here, let's do internal first. Remember, femur is rotating in towards the middle of the body. That's no lie, that's it. I'm gonna hold it for you, don't blink. That's all I got. Rotating the other way, external rotation. So rotating away from the body. I have a lot more on that side. So that's an easy way for you to test and just assess your hip mobility. You ideally want a total arc. So if I were to add up my internal and external rotation for one leg, let's say there were 45 on both and that's 90 arc, you wanna be above 100, right, for your total arc. So that would be a good normal value. But if you don't have sufficient hip mobility, you're not gonna be able to get into the positions that you need to, to hit a backhand, a two-handed backhand dink. If you're just hitting slice dinks forever, you don't have to get super deep, you don't have to get low and around the ball. If you watch James Ignatowicz, for example, he sits into like a full squat, gets around the ball, and then comes out of it. He has to have sufficient hip mobility, and he has to be strong in his lower body, which is point number three. Now that's a segue. Lower body strength is important because you're gonna get in a full squat multiple times a game when you're going into a two-handed backhand dink. When you're just slice dinking, you're not getting as low. Two-handed backhand dink, if you wanna be consistent with it, you have to get super low. That's why you have to have hip mobility. That's why you need to be super strong. Taking James for an example, he's a great example. He gets super low in all of his dinks. He's gotta be in great shape or he's gonna cramp out like we know you do sometimes, buddy. But that leads me to, we gotta go to the gym. Let's go. My paper. <laughs> All right, so now how do we improve these things? How do we improve thoracic rotation? How do we improve hip mobility? And how do we improve our lower body strength? How can I get these better? Time for me to show you. So our first one is gonna be for thoracic rotation. How do I rotate my spine better? And it's gonna be a kettlebell arm bar. Kettlebell in my left hand, it's about a moderate weight kettlebell. So this one is 35 pounds. I'm gonna have my right leg bent at 90 degrees, 90 degrees. All I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rotate my lower body as far as possible and then press with this kettlebell. I'll let the kettlebell pull me down. So now my lower body is facing that way and my upper body is facing the sky and then I'll let my lower body follow. So what this is doing is I'm taking my lower body, I'm leading the motion with my lower body 
keeping my upper body still as far as possible. Then I let my upper body follow. Then my upper body leads the motion. And then my lower body follows. It's gonna push my lower body as far as possible, keep my upper body this way, right? So they're in opposites. And then they do the exact opposite, right? The, the upper body leads the motion. Number two. What was number two? Okay, so exercise number two for thoracic spine mobility is going to be uh, actually full rotation, which I wanna specify that because we're not actually even gonna rotate on this one. It's gonna be an all fours belly breathing. So I'm gonna be on all fours and you can either take it on all fours on your hands like this, or we can go on your elbows. But what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna show you how your breath is correlated to how mobile your spine is. Because if we can breathe well and we can exhale well and we know how to like force the air out of our body, we'll be able to rotate better. So I'll start on my hands. All I'm gonna do is hands under my shoulders, knees under my hips. I'm gonna breathe in through my nose, filling my belly and my back with air, expanding everything even back here. I'm kinda in like this like protracted posture as well. So inhale. Feeling. And then just a normal exhale. You don't have to forcefully exhale. Inhale. But when you do exhale, you wanna feel your ribs. One, exhale all the air out of your body. You wanna feel your ribs slowly contract and come down. When I inhale, they go out. I'm expanding my lower back. It kind of feels like a stretch and then you slowly let the ribs come down, exhaling all the air out of your body. 10 breaths, rest for a second, 30 seconds, and then get back to it. This will help you with thoracic rotation. Going into hip mobility, how can we improve this? A lot of people just wanna like, kinda like beat, the, beat a dead horse of like stretching and things like that. I think there's a place for that, but I don't think that is like your main end all be all to getting better hip mobility. There's certain motions that bias internal and external rotation. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna go on a staggered stance. I'm gonna go about 90% of my weight on my front foot. This foot, maybe 10%. 90% of the weight, so my left leg's forward. Kettlebell's gonna be in my left hand. I'm gonna perform an RDL, so soft knee band, push my hips back. I'm gonna let this weight go in front of my body to about the center of my body, the midline of my body. I'm gonna hold for two count at the bottom, and then come back up. Push my booty back, let the bell, two, and then come back. Let the bell go to the center of my body, hold for a two count. I'm training actually internal rotation of this hip. If you lack internal rotation, it's gonna be a little bit more difficult, but it's also gonna improve it because the weight's pulling you into it more. You're gonna hold it at end range, and you're gonna gain internal rotation. Six, two second isos at the bottom, and come back up, and then go to the other side. Exercise number two for hip mobility will be, we're gonna try and open up like our glutes and the backside of our butt. So like, this will help us kind of be able to hinge better. So we're gonna go in like a lateral lunge position, like not super wide, just like semi-wide. All I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna perform a lateral lunge, kind of like hopping back and forth. So I'll go here, and then I'm gonna drop and catch with my arm. My goal here is to push my butt back, catch, absorb the force, and then push back, catch, absorb the force. Toes are facing forward, knees are facing forward. I'm not bowed out like this. I wanna train my internal and external rotation in this, and then take the force, and pop out of it. So those are my two exercises for hip mobility. Lastly, number three, increasing your lower body strength. This is pivotal if you want consistency within your backhand day. So my two favorite exercises, typically their foundational exercises are gonna be some kind of squatting motion. Whether it's goblet squats, back squats, front squats. Squats don't make you slow. They're not gonna make you less agile. They're a great foundational movement. Number two is split squats. So loading up weights here, dropping your back knee down, touching and then coming back up. That's a single leg movement, right? So you're doing a bilateral movement plus a single leg movement. Those two are foundational. You can add in others, but if you can do those two and you can do those well, you're gonna get stronger, you're gonna get better and more consistent with your backhand games. If you wanna join a community of serious pickleball players, drop down in the show notes below, click the link. We're starting a community for serious pickleball players that are willing to grow and looking to grow within their game. Whether it's fitness or pickleball, we've got you covered. You're gonna be a part of an exclusive group Join below, drop down in the link, check it out. 